Hi, survivors. Today, I am going to do my makeup. And I'm going to talk about why everyone should lock their doors and right away, right when you get home. So let's get into it. So start by adding my base. I love to add my moisturizer. So let's do this. I'm using Codex. And part of doing makeup is so cathartic, especially when you're talking about something serious. It helps you disassociate a little bit from what's really going on, which is a huge safety concern. So I hope everybody listens today. So last Wednesday, March 15th, have some notes of the times here so that I remember everything. Because it's important when you go through something traumatic and something that you want to have a report on, you need to have all the facts written down. You need to have all the photos. You need to be very organized in taking in information and having it recorded. So around 5, 12, like 5 o'clock, um, a little after 5, I got home. I parked in my parking spot. And I got out of my car. I went to the elevator. The elevator was full. So I went and I walked up the stairs instead. Because elevators give me anxiety. And so do a lot of people in crowds. <laughs> so I took up, walked up the stairs. And I got in my door. My dog was out of his cage because I only latched one of the latches. And so he was able to get out through one of the sides and just push open the cage in a sense. And so he got out with one of the latches on and he got out through the other side and just like pushed it open. So he was out. I was surprised by that. So I went and I consolidated him. I wanted to make sure he was okay. And that distracted me from, <laughs> that distracted me from locking the door right away. So I was petting him for say about three minutes and I look up and there is a man in my doorway I want to say he's around six feet, but he was crouched over. He was like looking through my doorway like this, like bent over, like looking in my doorway. And he was looking around my apartment. He was black and he had dreads like right up to here. He was tall and he was skinny and he was wearing a black hoodie. And I screamed when I saw him. So I ran towards the door because he closed it when I screamed and I locked it right away. I then looked through the peak pole to see if he was there. He wasn't there. So I looked around to see if I had a weapon and I grabbed a broom and it had a metal handle. So I thought, okay, I could whack him with this. And if you try to stab me, I can create space if he has a gun, I could kick it out. I just go into fight mode because of what has happened to me in my life with Dirty John. So I went to straight fight mode to chase after this guy because this guy was not going to take away my safety. So I go and I chase after him, but I can't find him. He is nowhere to be found. So I go inside, lock the door right away. And that's why it's really important to lock your doors right when you get home. 
try not to be distracted like I was and do not run after the guy. Don't do that. That was dumb to me. So I chase after this guy, but I can't find him. So I'm chasing after no one, you know, I'm just searching for him. And I call 911 and I get, tell them what happened. They send someone over, they send two officers over. And in the meantime, I call my boyfriend to stay on the phone with him, to let him know what happened and to also have a safe person on the line while I waited for the cops. So I waited for the cops. They showed up within 15 minutes. They told me that they checked the perimeter. They didn't find anyone matching that description. And so they took in my report. It was a male and it was a female. The female did all the talking, which I thought was incredible and extremely appropriate because I was able to feel safe with female because a male just came and tried to come into my house. And so I thought that was really appropriate for her to take the report. I gave them the report. I didn't remember what this guy looked like because I just wanted to block his face out of my memory. I just knew that he had a darker skin tone and he was wearing a black hoodie and where he was at the doorway. They asked me, if they could do anything for me to feel safe. I said, no, just taking the report would be helpful. So they took in the report, made sure I was okay, and then they left. I then just couldn't sleep. I looked at a bunch of safety stuff and I ordered a bunch of safety stuff for my house. I ordered a camera for my doorway. I ordered about four cameras for my house, inside and outside. I ordered a, a bolt to put on my door. So I have lots of bolts on my doors now. <laughs> you can't get in now. And I also have a padlock. I have a little thing that you stick to the door to like make sure no one can like kick it open. I also got a bar for my sliding glass door over there and I got several other things. I got a baseball bat, got a few more knives. I am okay. I'm very safe here. I have other stuff. We don't need to talk about the other stuff. But I have lots of other stuff to feel safe. I also, when I ran out of the door, I told this guy, if he could hear me, you know, that I would kill him. I wouldn't, you know, because of my response, because of what has happened to me in the past. So that is how I reacted. <laughs> I told my neighbors that I knew about it. So they knew about what happened and they were on alert. The following day, my neighbor and I walked around the building and we asked people, you know, have you seen a guy? Have you guys had weird experiences? I went, had a break in the other day. So has this happened to you? And there was actually like three people that talked to us that had interesting experiences. So I'll tell you the first one. The first one was this girl. She has an Australian shepherd like mine, a red merle, but he's a standard. So we have seen each other in passing 
And so she stopped and she talked to us. We asked her, have you guys, have you had a weird experience? We just had a break in. And she told us that her and her friend that have lived there, they have followings like I do. And so they told us that she had videos and she had not of the person, but she had videos of the audio and their conversation. But this guy, Reggie, he has been hanging around the property and he contacted them in the pool and came up to them and they were doing a TikTok live in the pool, which be careful, be careful where you do your TikTok lives, be careful where you do your lives anywhere or where you film and put up stuff because safety is so important. So Reggie came up to them with saying some weird stuff. And then Reggie, Reggie is the guy's name apparently, also approached them in the mail room, her one friend, and was asking her some weird questions. I actually have the video and let me play it for you guys. I hope this works. So he's approached her in the mail room. She states his name. So she clearly feels uncomfortable here and is just trying to get away from him and is recording him. I can't really make out what he's saying. I don't know if you guys can, but that has been her response. So I got a ring camera. It came in the mail. Well, I got a blink camera. So it's from Amazon and it's blink and it's basically the same thing as ring, but it's a lot more affordable and it was on sale. So I got that and I got a couple of blink cameras for my place. So now we all have cameras. And then after I talked to her, I talked to another neighbor and we saw her, she was in the parking garage. She was loading up her car. And we asked her, have you seen anyone creepy around here? And she said that she just saw this guy in a black hoodie in the parking garage. He looked El Salvadorian. And so we went and tried to look for him. She was in a hurry, though. She was on her way to L.A. So we didn't want to take up her time. And we just looked for the guy. And unfortunately, we couldn't find the guy. However, we did find someone else that we chatted with and we let them know what was happening here. So we found this other lady. We asked her about her experiences here. She had lived here for six years. She told us that there was a new management. He got hired. And when he got hired, a bunch of sketchy people were living here. That's her words, not mine. So she told us about her experiences and how the last year they have brought in student housing over here. And Marisol is going to join for a little bit. <laughs> oh, thank you. So they brought in student housing over here. And ever since, I've realized that the environment has changed as well. Because people are literally drinking in the parking lot and are 
gated parking lot and literally drinking and hanging out with friends in cars. So that's like not really okay to do in a parking structure, especially in Orange County, California. You don't sit in cars and drink and hang out with your friends. That's really not okay. And if you have an apartment here, you should be doing that in your apartment. So the environment has changed a little bit. This used to be a very safe area. However, just when I was young, I would go to parties. I would invite sketchy people. You know, you invite like, you bring the friend that has the fun stuff. You invite that friend over, you know, alcohol's involved. There's just a lot of stuff involved. And so, literally, college just can bring on some sketchy people, you know? So, we talked to this lady. She told us about all the stuff. She's like, honestly, she's a caring a little bit. She likes to call and complain about everything going on. She's like, oh, this and that. And then my friend was kind of amping her up. And I was like, oh, crap, I do some of that stuff. Like, I need to be more courteous. I need to be more aware of, you know, everything. So I just was like, oh, I need to go home and I need to just you know, make sure that I have the best patio, everything. I have animals. So sometimes I'm just like, oh, I hope you don't bark. So the lady was just complaining about everything. However, she did tell the story that there was this guy that came and was banging on her door one night and was wanting her to open her door. And she thought that was creepy. And it was this white male, tall white male, with a bunch of tattoos, neck tattoos, everything. So that did not match my description, but that was definitely something to keep into account. So we end up just walking around, not finding anyone, not finding that guy. And so we go back home, I cook some food. And then the next day, the cameras arrive. And I put up the cameras, right? When I put up the cameras, there's these people that live around the corner from me and they made a comment that I got cameras. So that was kind of weird. And my neighbor and I, we also walked and we were noting and jotting down who had ring cameras. So maybe we could ask them for their footage. Right after I got my ring cameras and these people made a comment about that, they got ring cameras. And it's weird because right around the time that they moved in is when I started seeing this sketchy figure. And I believe, I'm well, I'm 100% sure now that this is the guy that I saw in my doorway. And it's right around the time that they moved there. So today, I've been trying to get a hold of my apartment complex for a hot minute. They were not answering their calls. And it's crazy because I leave a message saying, oh, I called the cops. Like, wouldn't you call someone back? Then I sent emails. My neighbor, that's my friend, even went in, made a report to them. So it's weird that they didn't call me back till today. And it happened last Wednesday and today is Tuesday. So six days. Nothing. You think you would hear something. So, finally talked to them today. And I saw on my link camera, I saw the guy that I saw in my doorway go by. So, I take that footage and I send it to the girls. The girls believe that it's him. It's still like blocking his view a little bit, so I can't confirm whether or not it was Reggie for them, but I confirmed that it was that person that was in my doorway for me. So, <laughs> so <laughs> now that Marisol's down.
this is also hard for me to get through because this is also very traumatic. There is a lot of emotions going on. I don't really want to deal with it, but it's something that has to be dealt with because safety is a major issue. So I talked to the office. I sent them the video I have of the guy. The girl said it looks like it looks like they're Reggie. And that's where I'm at with this story. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope everyone feels safe out there. I recommend everyone to get security cameras. Also, if you have any favorite safety objects, please comment, drop it in the box. I would love to hear what everybody is using for safety. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe. I hope you stay tuned to see what happens next. And I hope everyone has a great night. So thank you.